three. One, two, three. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. All right, this side one more time. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, you got it. All right, I'm excited to bring you 30 AI <laughs> tools in 15 minutes. Yeah. Alex and I are here because of the Cambrian explosion of gen generative AI in education. In 18 months, over 300 new tools, thousands of tools if you count GPTs. Most existing EdTech products have launched AI features. We have had a revolution unlike any we've ever seen. So where do you start? You start with our database of 300 and counting tools. We are trying our best to keep on top of this incredibly vibrant and exciting ecosystem in this room and throughout the world. These are happening in every country. So this is, we have uh, 325 and it's gonna be growing right after this show. Uh, this is a video of how to use the database. It's filterable by age range. You can look at use cases. Make sense of it for what you want to do, whether you're an investor, whether you're an educator, check it out. But we're going to talk today about 30 of these tools very quickly. So how do you get started with AI in education? Well, first you start with the use case. Don't start with the product, start with the problem. So we've identified 10 common use cases for generative AI in education, and good old Alex Trebek would be happy because we've got the potpourri category as well. <laughs> We're gonna start out with writing instruction and note you can get the QR code here anytime and we need your help with more ideas. Other areas that we didn't include in our overview are tutoring, language learning, health and wellness, learning differences, school logistics, and more. On the writing side, yes, AI could be used to cheat on your five paragraph essay, but it is actually an incredible tool to structure more effective feedback, yeah. more effective writing, and ultimately uh, accelerate the assessment strategies um, in, in writing and instruction. One that we'd call out from here is Presto, which actually kids are creating their own books with um, storyboarding and, and writing embedded. Everwrite, a new product um, released by Newzella, and Quillbot, which is one of the leading uh, writing tools out there. Yeah, and so reading is another really hot area. This is obviously mostly for younger children, but people can take it at any age. Um, we love all these companies, but there are a lot of fantastic reading instruction companies out there. Lit Lab is here in the room today. Project Read, uh, Elo, these all allow students to basically create, teachers or ed uh, educators or students to create their own decodables, create their own readable segments, use, uh, and then uh, Elo actually listens to people read, listens to kids read and gives them real feedback. So reading instruction is hitting a really new level with all these AI tools, both from identifying and creation. Now on math, LLMs are horrible at doing math. They're actually at a fourth or fifth grade level. And so it's so important to have that thick wrapper around that really helps math instruction work yeah. well. Now, AI has been around in math for actually one of the longest periods of time. Uh, if you've ever used PhotoMath, it actually used the camera to solve problems yeah. right there for you. And that was released like eight years ago. The ones that we like to highlight are Sizzle, Edie, and Conmigo. Now, Edie is more on the front end. It, uh, it's a diagnostic around math misconceptions. So students take 12 questions, much like you would in Duolingo to understand your language level. It helps you go to the core of what your math misconceptions are. So maybe you aren't really doing well in algebra, but it turns out multiplying fractions is your core misconception. It can help drill down to that. And then, of course, there's the famous Conmigo from Khan Academy, right. probably the most well-known tool out there. Uh, absolutely. So there's an assessment and grading use case that's starting to blow up. Again, some of these companies are in the room today. Uh, some of them are in competition with each other. Others are brand new. They're all trying different things. This is Enlightened AI. Um, most of these are teacher productivity tools. They do sort of first layers of feedback for students and they actually can learn from educators. They learn, especially in Lighten, it learns from what educators do over time and it grades more and more like the educator. They also create your own rubrics. They do all kinds of things. And this is one of the many types of productivity tools that is starting to really blow up in the education space. 12 tools down, 28 to go. We've got data and infrastructure for you. Ever wonder why the data doesn't talk to the other data? That's because of 
unstructured and structured data problems. This is actually what AI is great at doing. It's great at taking unstructured data and structuring it, or taking one set of data structured one way and another set of data structured another way and helping them talk to each other. Dewey would be a leading example of this. Um, actually, Mick just got funding the other day at yeah. Ignition, not on our list. Um, and basically what this allows is all the data to talk to each other across all of your systems. That could mean having a mental health check-in alongside a reading score going back three years. It can also create predictive value, which is a, an area for educators to watch out for bias. So anytime you're looking using AI for prediction, you wanna understand what's the underlying data and is there any bias in that data. On the data infrastructure side, these companies will help you with that. Uh, absolutely. So some of the companies that are coming out now are sort of bridging school use cases and uh, customer use cases, individuals. And few of these are doing really, really interesting things around what they often call curiosity. They want to instill curiosity into the education system, meet students where they're at, actually allow them to ask questions about the world, and then come to you know, basically create educational content on demand in relationship to what the students want to know. This is really exciting use case. It's very nascent, and more companies are coming all the time, but some of these are apps that you can just download on your phone right now and try out. They can be used in a school use case or for individual learners, even adult learners. All right, talking about home and school, the school home to connection is one of the most under leveraged layers of education today. When COVID happened, think of all the roles that changed. The one role that changed the most was the role of the parent. Parents want to be engaged, parents want yep. to be involved, but accessing all of the information of a school, what their kids need, what, you know, information systems, when's my parent-teacher conference, when is the tennis team, all the way to how can I better support my child in reading, that has been a real struggle. All here would be probably the best case. They are the engine behind um, LA Unified's ED tool, which is, basically a chat bot for students in LA Unified. And parents. And we also have Paloma and Talking Points. This, I, the idea is that AI can actually be the bridge that translates EduSpeak to parent speak. Yeah, and Paloma actually builds off the parent-teacher conferences, which is super interesting, turns them into a planning session for the parents and the teachers. This is probably the most crowded use case so far in education. That doesn't mean it's not amazing. Actually, some of the innovation has been incredibly fast here, and some of these companies have grown incredibly quickly over the last year. Uh, these are tools that teachers can use to do a wide variety of things in the classroom that they have to spend a lot of time on if they don't have additional tech. Again, many of these companies are in the room. You should check them out. And there's lots more on the uh, database. But these do things like create lesson plans, create rubrics, create quizzes, create flashcards, create multiple choice questions, create case scenario questions, uh, you know, even do things like write, write letters for students' parents to send home and automate. Almost anything that a teacher does, somebody is working on a way to automate it right now. And many of these companies are doing that. All right, on the teacher professional development side, not only how do we support teachers with productivity tools, but how do we help them excel at their craft? And one of the great use cases here is really around teaching and professional development. Studies show that a, a teacher feels more judged when they have a peer or a, a superintendent or principal review. But when it's AI giving feedback, they know it's AI. So it's a little bit of a lower filter to get feedback, support, and analysis. That said, we also don't want to get to the kind of in bloom days where we're worried about technology um, uh, measuring our teachers and not people. Right. And so many of these organizations, uh, TeachFX I'll highlight, they do a great job of infusing their AI into the teacher educator learning journey. TeachFX records the classroom. It can tell you talk time. It can tell you who, what kinds of instruction, whether it's direct instruction or small group. It can also uh, cue different questions for understanding coming up and then help the educator rewind, rewatch class and learn and improve over time. All right, last, our favorite category, Alex, Potpourri. Yeah, potpourri. Um, so just like having educators understand AI more and more and more, it can really help them actually evolve and use AI to their own use cases in the classroom rather than taking it just off the shelf. 
Potpourri is very innovative use cases that we've seen throughout the ecosystem. Um, let's go th through some of these, right? So antimatter it does something incredibly cool. It basically allows students to create education memes and put them together. So you actually, like internet memes, you, 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 it's, it has a meme creator, it, you can share, you can do all sorts of things with that. It also has a tool called Sorcerer, where it's basically assessment, uh, Socratic assessment for students. It, it asks the student questions rather than the student asking the chatbot questions, and then tells you how well you understand a particular subject. Snorkel, we just talked to here, their incredible snorkel does something where students can show their work and record themselves drawing and answering questions, and then it, collab it, it collects all the answers. Surf it gives the student feedback, of course, through AI. It also surfaces the misconceptions and the grades for teachers. So it's basically getting students to actually um, bring their the, show their thinking in, in real time. Do you want to? Yeah, talk? I mean, Wizdolia is basically taking specialized learning and creating data sets to train the LLM yeah. for specific use cases. So like in medicine and healthcare, it is building a library of, yeah. of learning and tools. And what we see a lot of folks using AI for is career academies. So the ability to create specialized learning where maybe your staff doesn't even have the expertise in that field, but the LLM is bringing in essentially an expert chat bot that can help answer questions yeah. around that area. And, and Wizdoli also allows individual learners to upload even book length pieces of material and it turns them automatically into learning journeys with yeah, questions, case studies, flashcards, and it gives you a progress indicator. So you can basically you know, learn a book or a, a long audio piece uh, and it structures your learning for you. It's really interesting. SAI is in the room today. SAI it allows students to tell their unique narratives. So that's pronounced SAI, and it's a play on essay because it actually supports students in creating their own, um, basically, college essays or scholarship application essays, anything where they have to surface their own personal stories. But of course, it doesn't write it for them. It asks them all sorts of questions, has a conversation, and helps them identify what about themselves they want to highlight, um, especially useful for equity cases. Um, yeah, yeah. So so we're gonna wrap here, but EdTech Insiders, if you go to substack.edtechinsiders.com, or you can check us out on Apple or on Spotify, we have a podcast where we're meeting and talking with all of these entrepreneurs. And one thing I would just say is you, the educators, have the power. This is a moment, a Cambrian explosion like we've never seen before. It really is. But everyone is hungry for use cases in the classroom that they can build their products around. And it's never been easier to build AI tools or ed tech tools, period. So you are really in the driver's seat. We also need your help. Our database only has 350 <laughs> companies. Just look around. We know that there's like 500, 600. So we want your recommendations please. on what are the best out there. So please follow up and with a, the QR code. At, and at the top of the database, there's a link to submit additional companies, which we review and then put in. So please surface them because we want this to be the most comprehensive up to date. And it's open, totally free for everyone. Um, there are also, you know, a lot of the entrepreneurs in this room are teachers, which is really amazing. Educators are moving into the entrepreneurship space at a level I, I've never seen before because AI superpowers their ability to do complicated technology. So, all right, we're going to wrap. That's it. I'm Ben Cornell. This is Alex Sarlin. We are EdTech Insiders. Thank you all so much. <laughs>